Hey everyone and welcome back to the Redefine Effects YouTube channel. So today we're doing this destruction, gravity weapon, explosion, sort of everything all in one tutorial. And then we're going to have it all come together using custom properties. So definitely a lot to learn. And it's also a loopable, so great for Instagram and stuff like that. Before we get into it, according to YouTube analytics, about a half of you watching this video is not subscribed. So I would really appreciate it if you found any of my tutorials helpful ever. There are over 60 of them right now. It, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to support the channel and all of the upcoming tutorials that I'll be posting before the end of the year. It would really mean a lot. Please hit subscribe. And on the same note, it would be great if you could follow Redefine Effects on Instagram. That's where I post the newest updates and everything that's happening with the channel. And just like with all of my other tutorials, you can download the project file for this for free. The link is in the description. Okay, so this is what we're going to start with in Max. As usual, I'm working in units, centimeters, one unit is one centimeter. I have this crate model here. Now, important thing is that I broke it up into individual elements. So it's not one big object, but I have these separate planks, which will help with the destruction. So I suggest you do the same. And then I have this wind here already that is going to cause the explosion, basically. So you could go under forces, wind, and just make a standard wind. And I gave it 70 for strength, 0.1 decay, and then 5 for all these settings here. So let's create a tie flow object in our scene. So let's do birth objects. And for now, we're going to work with just one crate. And then in the end, when we have everything working, I'm going to add more objects in here to make it more interesting. But for now, let's just keep it fast. So I'm going to select everything that's the crate and do add selected. And then we need to fracture it. So I'm going to add a Voronoi fracture. Now, the best way to get wood splinters is to change the scale down here under the Voronoi. So you can do slice play normal scale X. We can do 0.2. We can do 0.2 on scale Y. And then I'm going to do around 17 on scale Z. And I'm plugging in these numbers because I've already done this. So I sort of know what will work. And for the points, we're only going to do 10 and variation 25. So basically leave it at default. I really don't want to fracture the wood too much because you really need a pretty strong explosion to get wood to sort of shatter. And already by having these individual planks, I sort of just want the crate to fall apart. I don't necessarily need it to turn into a bunch of small fragments, but there are a few here and there which I think makes it look better. So we're going to fracture it just a little bit. So we can hide the original object. And now we have tie flow particles. So I'm going to go under display and display geometry. And I can go under material and select the crate texture material and apply it to tie flow so we can see the wood. Now then we need to turn it into physics object. So I'm going to do physics shape. So immediately after adding a physics shape, it will all just fall down right away but I want it to get activated later, maybe around frame five. And physics shape doesn't give you any timing controls. It will always become activated right away on frame zero. So we need to add a physics switch and set it to deactivate. So now nothing happens. And now I'm going to add another physics switch and set it to dynamic activate. And now I have timing controls. So I can say activate it on frame and say frame five. So now from frame zero to frame five, nothing happens. And then it gets activated and falls down. So to add the explosion effect, we need to add this wind as a force. So I'm going to add a force operator and pick the wind. And right away, it will sort of just get blown away. So right now it doesn't look all that great and it's being affected by the wind again immediately on frame zero. So we need to go back into timing and set it on frame. And I'm going to say that I want the wind to be active from frame 5 to about frame 10. So now we get more of an explosion rather than wind. So already it looks much better. Now two ways you can control the wind strength. You can either click on the actual wind and just increase the strength. Or you can go under the force effect under multiplier. And you can 
play with the multiplier to increase that as well. So that's just a little tip. So I don't want everything to crumble into pieces right away. I actually want majority of it to stay stuck together because I think that's more of a realistic wood behavior. So let's add a physics bind. I'm gonna go under bind breaking and say break by force and set this to 50,000. So now I'm telling Typhlo that only if a piece is being affected by a force that's greater than 50,000, then I want it to break into those smaller fragments. And let's increase the variation to 20%, but still nothing really happens. It still breaks apart right away. So let's go under timing and set it again to frame and say range from frame five to frame thousand. And now you can see that we get the glued effect where even though it's being blown away, it's sort of stuck together. And then when it hits the floor, it reaches that 50,000 force and it breaks apart further. So that's really what I was going for when I was playing with these numbers is this kind of a look. So as of right now, this is what we have happening. So already this could be sort of just a wood explosion tutorial. You can use this technique to explode all sorts of wooden objects and just sort of have fun with this kind of setup. All right, so if you look at where we're at with the setup, we have the initial explosion, then basically it waits for a few frames and then those pieces start getting attracted to the sphere. So let's do this step right now. So first let's make the sphere, which they will be attracted to. So we can put that maybe somewhere here and just call it activator sphere and we can right click object properties, make it not renderable. The way to tell Typhlo to wait for a few frames and then for something else to happen, we need to do a time test. And then you sort of just need to look at the timing of things. So let's just say that this explodes away, crumbles down, that it has a few frames to settle. So maybe we can say if the event is older than 100 frames with a 20 frame variation, then in this range of time, I want something else to happen. Or in other words, I want the test to be true and everything will get sent out to another event. Now in the new event, we're going to drag out a find target, pick the sphere as our target. Let's connect that to the time test. So now the pieces are being attracted to the sphere, but the attraction is not strong enough. So they're struggling to get there and set the velocity to 85 with a 20 centimeter variation. So now they're being attracted to the sphere, but they're being attracted to the closest point. So they're not really evenly spread. So we need to change the point here to random. And then also make sure that the sphere is actually sitting on the ground. By default, half of it will be under the ground. So let's just raise this up. So now they're being attracted to the sphere, but they're not colliding with it. So let's add a physics collision here and pick the sphere as the collider. This is what we have so far. So it explodes, flies out, and then it's coming back and it's attracted to the sphere. So this is very close to my initial example. So if we watch it one more time, we did this part, we did this part, and now we're going to do the omnidirectional explosion flying everywhere, forces and create another wind. And this time make it a spherical wind. And let's set the strength to 400 with 0.1 decay and five for all of these, just like before. And I'm gonna scale it up and align it to the sphere. So same as before, we want the chunks to be attracted and then it waits for a little bit and then they explode. It doesn't happen right away. So we're going to add another time test here, set the value to 200. So basically on frame 200 is when the next action will take place. So let's add another force operator and add the wind as our force. And it's not working right now because I forgot to set the time test as frame instead of event H. It explodes, gets attracted, and then on frame 200, it's pushed out again. And this will look much better once we add more crates, but for now it's working. All right, so at this point, we've made the first three events. And after this explosion happens, we give it a little bit of time to settle down. And then we want them to go back and take the original shape. So basically we need to somehow 
tell Typho to remember where the pieces were on frame zero, and then in the end have those pieces fly back to that original point. So the way to do that is to create a custom properties operator and drag it under Voronoi fracture. Because basically we want the tell tie flow to remember where these fractured pieces of the wood are when the event starts. So I'm going to set the operation as set value to channel so that it's saved. And then under custom TM and TM stands for transform matrix. I'm going to say TM and then for the channel um, you can just write TM or give it any kind of random name you want. So now we basically need to create another find target that these pieces will be attracted to. So I've already added another time test. So on frame 275, the pieces that are on the ground are going to be sent into the next event. So let's create another find target. So for this find target, we need to set control by time. And then for this test true, if distance is less than, make that some lower number, so maybe 0.1, just so we get more accuracy when they start flying in back together. And for the control time, we can say maybe 60 frames. So I'm telling Typhlo, I want you to reassemble these pieces within 60 frames. And then ease in is a nice effect. Basically, as you can see, the pieces sort of slowly slow down. It's almost like a smooth curve. They slow down and then they assemble instead of it being very abrupt. So that's a nice effect. So we can do something like 30 to start and then we can come back to that. So for the target location, we just want to say custom float and set that to TM. And then for the point, we want to say custom TM and set the channel to TM as well. So now we're basically telling it, I want you to find the target of this previously set custom properties. So again, that means the pieces will essentially be forced to fly back to where they originally were. And for the target alignment, we need to do the same thing. So again, custom TM and set the channel to TM. So at this point, we can connect it to the time test. Let me show you what will happen. So I've ran the sim and the pieces are attracted to the original position starting at frame 275, but it's not working. They're just sort of jiggling in place. And that's because they're still physics objects. So there's two things fighting against each other. We have the pull of the fine target trying to put them in place. And then we have the gravity and the physics interactions stopping that from happening. So we actually need to create another physics switch and put it above fine target and set it to deactivate. So just with that one change, we have something that's very close to what we want. You can see they come together, but they're still sort of moving around a little bit. And that's because the fine target is still active and it's trying to pull these pieces in place continuously. So what you can do to stop that from moving is just add a stop helper. So now that I've added the stop operator and connected it to fine target, we have something that I would almost call final. It's actually working really well just the way we want, but it's still not perfect. There still are some pieces sticking around. And after playing with it, I found that that's caused by the fine target accuracy. So again, under the test true if distance, I set it to 0.1. You can set it even lower and it will get better, but it's, I just haven't been able to get it to be perfect. So a workaround that I found is just to essentially force this to reset into the original custom properties. So basically just look at the time where it looks good. So for me right now, that's frame maybe 310. So I'm going to add another time test and set it as frame and set the value to 310 with zero variation. And then let's drag out another custom properties and set the operation to get. So now we're going to be getting the values from this initial set custom properties that we created up here. For the custom TM, we're going to say TM and channel TM and connect it to the time test. So I ran the sim and it's working exactly as we wanted. So basically on frame 10, you can see on, on frame 309, it's still sort of broken up even though it's in place. 
and then on frame 310 it just snaps in place and that's because of this time test that on frame 310 sends all of those pieces into this new event where it's essentially just reset into its initial state that it was in. So now that you have everything working, definitely don't forget to save your work before it crashes. And then you would just go back to birth objects and say add selected. So I added all of the crates and ran the sim. Everything is looking good. If you have some pieces sort of bouncing around, you can go under the main Typhlow settings under physics. And I ended up in the end raising the sub steps all the way to 16. And then what I'm seeing after adding everything is that the find target is not really strong enough to attract all of the crate pieces. So what you can do is just go back into it and maybe increase the velocity from 85 to like 100 and that should take care of that. And then it explodes. You can also increase the strength of this explosion if you would like just by raising the strength of the wind to maybe 600 and then they go back into their original position. If you found this tutorial helpful, I would appreciate if you could hit the like button and please subscribe. If you're not subscribed and watching these tutorials, it would really help. So thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.